in the workplace without a union, the ownership and management can do anything they want with regard to your terms and conditions of employment or firing you or not hiring you, anything they want that's not forbidden by law. There is no law that says I can't uh, uh, hold on to you, I can't, uh, I can't uh, send you back to the miners if I don't like the way you talk, uh, et cetera, et cetera. I was in my sixth year of uh, play in the big leagues making uh, $16,000, and my fiancé was flying for American Airlines making nineteen. And then the Messerschmitt-McNally uh, decision came down. Free agency was implemented in 76, and I went from making 16000 in 1976 to making 60000 uh, for for a year for on a two-year contract. I thought I was a millionaire. And uh, that's when it had an impact, and, and we could really see that we had been shortchanged for a long time, and there was something that we could now do about it. We started with very little. I won't say nothing, but very little. You weren't going to have a career where you could retire and be happy, but um, we had very little, so we stuck together, and it worked on our behalf, you know, with multi-year contracts that they didn't use to give out, and uh, guarantees which they didn't use to give. So I was now beginning to see the fruits of our labor, the benefits of sticking together and going with the Players Association. I encourage the players to treat the union as their union, not my union, not anybody else's union. It was their union. It was there for them. They were the union. I, I would hear how we were, we were, uh, you know, being told what to do by Marvin Miller, and then later it was Don Fear. And you don't hear that so much anymore. I think think that that's, uh, uh, you know, it's finally been proven to be wrong because the players did uh, give direction to Marvin, to Don. The players had quite a bit of say. Um, those of us that were on the negotiating committees tried to be involved. Now, we always had the feeling that we're, we're doing this for the group, and I think that's why it's persevered so well. I look at it as it's the players' union. It's not Don Fears or Marvin Miller's union. It's the players. And the players have a voice. They get listened to. The secret of... of uh uh, the success of the Major League Baseball Players Union. You know, and I said it's not a secret. Uh, the solidarity of that membership through the years. Uh, you know, I, I've worked for many unions and know about many others. In, uh, in my whole adult life, uh, I've been in labor management relations, and I don't know of another union with a record like that. It doesn't take very long. To, for a union to be uh, beaten to its knees if, if you don't have solidarity of the membership. And uh, I don't think you get solidarity by saying you've got to have solidarity. You build solidarity, and you build it with the progress you make and the cooperation of the membership. Well, we were trying to um, gain things, not lose things, and that's what Marvin always uh, talked about. Once you gave something back, you never get it again. So we always try to make things better. Um, you know, we, at that time, we were playing like 22 days without a day off, flying from coast to coast. I mean, just all the little things. It was not all about money all, a lot of the times. But if the players don't understand that they have to protect the rights they have at this point, those rights can evaporate in a heartbeat. And we saw them evaporate back and forth time and time again over the course of the early history of the association. And I think it's very important that the players understand why they're getting paid the way they are, why they have so many rights, and why the industry is so healthy right now. You, you cannot take for granted what you have is what you're going to have. Uh, and, and the corollary of that is true also. Uh, you, you cannot take for granted that what you have always existed.